Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about the distribution of drugs within body compartments. In the previous tutorial I said that this video would be on the metabolism of drugs, but I've decided that it's probably best to talk about the distribution of drugs before we move on to metabolism. For the purposes of distribution, we can consider that the body is made up of four major compartments, which are really collections of fluid, and numerous minor compartments. These major compartments are the blood, or strictly speaking the plasma, fat, extracellular fluid, and intracellular fluid. Then there are numerous other minor compartments. These include the cerebral spinal fluid, the peritoneum, synovial fluid in joints, and the fetus in pregnancy. There are numerous others, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll consider these as one single compartment. So if a drug is placed into one of the compartments, we can see how it might move and distribute into other compartments. Often drugs are placed into the blood. These are drugs which are given intravenously. So when a drug is placed into a compartment, it often associates with binding molecules. These binding molecules are often proteins such as albumin. This process sequesters the drug within the compartment, effectively increasing that compartment's storage capacity. And there is an equilibrium maintained between the bound drug and the unbound drug. The unbound drug within a compartment is then able to move into a new compartment and thus an equilibrium is maintained between adjacent compartments. When a drug moves into a new compartment, some of that drug is sequestered by binding molecules within that new compartment. This process continues until there is a balance between each compartment and a balance between the amount of free drug versus bound drug within each compartment. The balance between each compartment is determined by a number of factors, and this is best represented using an equilibrium constant. If you've ever done much chemistry, then you'll have definitely seen equilibrium constants before. But if you haven't, then all you need to know is that they are a number which shows whether the balance is in the forward direction or in the back direction. I'm not going to discuss equilibrium constants further here, but I am going to talk about the factors that affect whether drugs would prefer to move into one compartment versus another. Thus, I can say that the equilibrium constant is dependent on the permeability of barriers between compartments, the pH within the compartment, the binding capacity within the compartment, and numerous other factors such as the fat solubility of the drug, which is especially important for those moving into the fat compartment. Now I'm going to talk about the volume of distribution, which depending on the level of pharmacology you need to know, may or may not be important. The volume of distribution, denoted VD, is a property of the drug which shows how much drug needs to be within the body to get a certain concentration in the plasma. It is defined as the total amount of drug in the body divided by the concentration of drug in the plasma. I'll give you an example of how it might be used. Say I want to get a plasma concentration of morphine of 3 seventieths of a milligram per litre. How much morphine do I have to give a 70 kilogram patient? I know that the volume of distribution of morphine is about 5 litres per kilogram of body weight. And I'm trying to achieve a plasma concentration of 3 seventieths of a milligram per litre. Well, by rearranging the above formula, I can see that the dose I need to give, which in this case is the same as the total amount of drug in the body, is the volume of distribution times the desired plasma concentration. Substituting in the numbers and solving shows that I need 15 seventieths of a milligram for every kilogram of body weight. 
Therefore, for a 70 kilogram person, I need a dose of 15 milligrams. And that's a rundown of the distribution of drugs. In the next video, I will be talking about the metabolism of drugs and the cytochrome P450 system. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please help us produce more by making a donation at www.handwrittentutorials.com.